thanks for coming. And uh, and then you can be like, what are we learning today? Yes. And then I'll say that. And then you'll say, okay, great. All right. So let's All right. do that. So what are we learning today? So thank you for coming to my studio. Mm -hmm. And I'm Kelly Patton, and I am an artist and illustrator. And I have some t-shirt uh, demonstration to show everybody today. And what we have here is a, a linoleum block carving, which is the form of printing that I'm going to show you today. There's um, a couple of different ways to do it. I've figured out my own method, so I'm going to talk about that. Um, so the first thing we need to talk about are the material lists. Uh, what you'll need is some oil-based relief ink. Uh, this is from Daniel Smith and it's an American-made company in Seattle. And this is an oil-based ink that I have prepared on the plate here. And so what I've done is just uh, moved the ink around, getting it ready to print. Uh, and, and so this right here is the Baron. Uh, you'll need a Baron. And um, uh, the, the glass plate to disperse the ink onto. You can get this at a any frame shop cut to your size. Um, you'll need a linoleum block that has been carved. Uh, there are uh, they're available at all kinds of art supply stores. And you'll also be finding this um, lovely thing, which is a uh, carving tool. So that will come before this process. And if anybody has any questions about how to carve a linoleum block, please email me. I'd be happy to answer those questions. Now more about the materials. Uh, so we're working with oil-based relief ink, which is uh, you're going to need to work in a ventilated area. I have a little fan here. And so I keep the fan on low, pointing out a window. I have many windows in my studio, so they're all open. Um, and I just want to make sure the air is moving. Now, I also have a mask and some gloves for cleanup because I'm gonna use mineral spirits to wash the plate when we're done. So, we're gonna be printing shirts and I have a couple of sample pieces of fabric here. And um, the reason why I'm using these first before I print on the shirt is because we want to make sure that our sample is going to, uh, is going to look as close to the perfect print that we want. So uh, I have already covered the ink, the block here with a few layers of ink and now I'm um, really coating it again and I'm just taking it in the same direction from the bottom up. I'm getting all the edges, coating it as evenly as possible. I don't want to actually go over it too many times. Um, maybe about, you know, 10 times or so across the whole thing to get an even dispersion of ink. And then when you hold it to the side, you can see that there's these little dots that kind of disperse across it, and it's like a perfect stamp. You want to look really carefully at the edges because sometimes the ink doesn't cover. So you can see with a good light where the ink has covered on the block. It's pretty important. So now I have uh, this sample fabric and uh, the way I like to do this is I have a piece of foam core cut already so I can move things around. Now I'm just going to put this down. I'm not really worried about making this one straight just yet because it's sample fabric. Now what I what I actually do is put it on the floor and I'm wearing soft shoes and I just step on it a little bit because it's a lot easier to do it this way than to, um, I don't have a press, so this is the best press I have. And you don't want to use your arms or your hands because it's, it takes a lot of strength to do that. So, stamped it on the fabric. Now let's see what it looks like. So that's why we do a trial run in the beginning because you can kind of see that it's going to need a few more passes before you get a really good print. Sample piece. This is also a different material than this. This is a this is jean material. Scraps of old jeans 
and um, you're going to need to get as much ink on the block as possible to really make a print come up on a pair of jean pants. And uh, right now we're using it just to transfer the ink, get it ready for the t-shirts. So I've put the ink on the, the glass here and I'm going to move sprayer in all different directions like this to make sure I have the most even dispersion on there. <laughs> What's that called? This is a brayer. Mm -hmm. I believe it's a four inch size brayer you can buy. Mm -hmm. Speedball makes it. Okay, and here we go with coating the block again. This is a pretty good size block and um, it's going to need a lot of ink. Don't be shy to just get it on there. And the cool thing about this kind of process is you could use different colors from this um, kind of ink. Uh, you could use gradient colors or blues or pinks or you can mix your own basically. I'm really into the black print these days and so now I want to look at it and make sure that I've got kind of this like scaly uh, surface of ink and I actually do see something that's stuck to it. This is part of it. This is all part of it, just making sure that you look at it before you print it. Take your time. So, could we see it? There we go. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. I'm just going to do another test run here. Step on it again. Yay. It's very exciting. Kind of like rock back and forth a little bit. And if you have a piece of foam core, that's really a great material to use under it because it kind of gives. It's a little bit squishy. All right, so we're going to pull it off and see how it looks. So that one is. Another sample run. Okay. So what did you learn? You just need to put more on just to get an idea of how much to put on to make. Yeah, and um, it's it. This block actually requires a lot of ink, and mm -hmm. so the first couple passes. The reason why you need the sample uh, is because it's needing to get layers built up on this block so it can stick to itself. So okay. the more ink you put on it, the more it's sticking to itself. And now what I do is I just squirt out of the tube in a line, the top of the glass. And I take my burner. Pull it down, like pick it up at the bottom, put it at the top, pick it up at the bottom, and just pull it down, pull the ink down like that. Then go to the sides like this. And kind of do it in all directions that way. You're really getting it evenly coated. And that looks really good, pretty loaded. Now. ink on the block and it is it is a fine art process it's um, the materials are, are fine art materials um, does take a lot of trial and error in the beginning and the carving uh, carving the block is also a really lovely process that takes some careful planning ahead and steady hand. Um, so just take your time when you're doing this. Stuff. It's just anybody can do this. Just take your time. Go slow.
So now I have a piece of white foam core that I have drawn a center line down so I know it's kind of a, a way for me to center the t-shirt. This shirt is um, doesn't have any seams on it, but you'll note, well, yeah, it does have seams at the top. What I do is I line the seams at the top here. And any shirt, you want, what you want to do is grab under the armpits and pull it like this. You'll find where the armpits are in the seams and you pull them straight out. I like to use my table as a kind of a straight edge so I can see, I kind of eyeball it, and now I'm going to put the print a little bit further down on the shirt. I like to usually print it about an inch to two inches down from the neck, because it looks good on a person if it's in that place. If it's too far down, then it's kind of not the best position. And um, grab the seams. Pull them out like this, loosen the fabric a little bit, take your time, you know, doing this the first couple of times. And then I, I kind of draw like an, a line here so I can see that it's where I need to pull it in other areas to get it centered. This shirt is actually pretty loose and um, a little bit easier to to print on because it's kind of a... okay so now we have the block it's all ready to go we've got this really nice like turtle shell texture and let's just see how it looks let's just going to push this down a little bit further And after doing this like 50 times, I swear I do it a lot faster. <laughs> I printed about 60 of these shirts. Okay, so what I do is I grab it like this and I look down at the shirt, take a deep breath. Oh my gosh. Just gently press it down. And I pull it off the foam core. And this shirt, actually, this shirt isn't as nice as my other shirt, so I'm just kind of using this one as a trial. Um, it's good to have some kind of used shirts to practice at first. What you're doing, I really got that pressed down, hopefully. Okay, so... We have this awesome kind of vintage, a little bit faded, but darker around the edges. That's really cool. It looks really awesome. I like that one. They're all going to be different, is the thing. And we'll do the next shirt. So now that this one's done, I'll just pull it off the foam core. There's a spot to hang it. Hang it up to dry. Okay, so now the next one I'm just gonna whip out here for you to wrap up the end of the video. Find the seams at the top. Down. Seams at the armpits, straighten them out.
stand over it. This is a good height for the table to work on. Okay. Now we're going to coat the block again. Every time you print, you want to make a nice, fresh coat. I have a good feeling about this one. It's starting to really turn out well. more ink, go back for it. You can kind of get a gauge as to how much you want once you get used to seeing it up close. And you can also print these kinds of blocks on pieces of paper, fine art paper, and a lot of people do that with linoleum block printing or wood carving. And uh, often you won't really need to coat the block with this much ink when you're working with paper, but you need to really do it when you're working with fabric because fabric really absorbs it. So keep that in mind. Okay, and then I hold it like this. It's a moment of truth. So there is kind of a lot involved, but it's pretty simple and straightforward if you just be consistent with this kind of, and that you'll get exactly what you want, hopefully, <laughs> with a little bit of unpredictability thrown in too. Alright, this is a darker piece of fabric and it's not going to be quite as bright. What? I'm sorry, I think it was too far back. It's a darker piece of fabric, and so, as you can see, the black is a really good choice, and it really shows up in a darker piece of fabric. Beautiful. And this one is even more um, saturated than the last one, you can tell, so it's, that's why it's really important to start off with some sample fabrics first, because you can see that it faded in the beginning and it becomes more and more saturated. That's it. And then when you're ready to clean all of this stuff up, you need to have some mineral spirits. I use odorless mineral spirits. It's not any less dangerous, but you want to make sure it's ventilated. And then use gloves and wear a mask. Clean it up. Paper towels and dispose of the paper towels in a fireplace or somewhere where they're not going to be sitting in a trash can. Um, and then you have some t-shirts. The drying process takes about a week. Um, if it's hot outside and there's a fan blowing in your studio, you're gonna have it dry a lot quicker, but generally I would say it's about a week for it to dry. And that's how you do linoleum block printing on t-shirts. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. So you're at um, 20 minutes. So why don't you load it on your computer? Because uh -huh. there's no editing needs to be done. You can decide, you know, no, I'll be happy to speed up parts. and. I, yeah, and I don't have any editing software. You don't have uh, iMovie? That's I don't really know how to use it. Could you show me how to use it? I'd love to. Okay. See, I'd love to figure out how we can, how we can send each other back. See, because I'm just sitting there, and it just motivates me to get it right, you know, to find out the answer. If nobody gives a damn, you just stop doing it. 